just a little collection or assortment of ramblings of whatever. A big one is society really loves actors. This is kind of a forgotten thing of society, and now that I'm thinking about it, there is a, a defunct, exterminated human society, you know, back when men were men and women were women, and that might have been 400 years ago, I, I don't know, who knows. History's been erased and rewritten, fake. Well, apparently a long time ago, actors were held in extremely low regard by common everyday people, I guess, from this ancient human society that has been gone for centuries, and ancient humans, you can barely find traces of this in really old media. They just had no regard for actors. They viewed actors as basically prostitutes without morals. Maybe viewed lower than prostitutes, I don't know. When you think about it, well, you know, there's the word prostitute, and journalists are today regarded as such. Journalists are held in very, very low regard by a lot of people because they don't investigate. They just write whatever their boss tells them to write and they make it all sensational. So actors are obsessed with making you believe in a fictional character. And this could actually be a very, very broad topic because I guess if you think really broadly and kind of abstract, anybody could be an actor. The common freaks that pretend to be the opposite of what they are. Not just dick girls pretending to be men, or swire boys pretending to be women. Like, they pretend to be Christian, or they pretend to have certain political beliefs that they don't actually have. You can probably find information about seasonal political shills, especially on Reddit, and the scripts that they have to follow and that they're not allowed to deviate from it. Like, they'll, if they break their NDA and confess that they were political shills, they'll tell you that they were forced to fall back on ad hominems and say, well, your post-history tells me that you're an idiot, when the person they're arguing with, like, their post-history could be only about gardening or knitting or something like that. And, yeah, and, and of course, these shills will get into these never-ending battles with each other. They'll tell you that, too, and you can see it in action. Redditors are very stupid. They will argue with themselves for hours and forget to log out of their accounts. They're paid to do that. But I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these freaks are pathetic enough to do it for free. Anyhow, this is about actors right now, but there's some other topics. Well, advertisers are liars. They, you know, actors are liars. They, uh, like Clint Eastwood comes to mind. Like, he's pretending to be some really badass tough guy, but... His name is one letter away from Clit Eastwood. Like, they're not tough or nice or... I, I don't know. I, I can't say I've met them personally. But then again, all the people that I know, well, most of them are really, really fake and their mask slips constantly. I don't even have time or energy to get into any of that, but I'm sure you know a lot of people in your own life who are like that. They just pretend to be something and it's fake. You can tell it's fake. And their mask slips all the time. I think humans, deep in our heart, we feel we feel that acting is cringy. When we think about acting, we, we cringe out. We just, we might stare in amazement at someone who's got, I guess, one single nad to get up on stage and make a fool of themselves and then be proud of themselves for doing that. I, I don't know. There's really a lot to get into. This could actually be a really big, sprawling topic, so please pitch in with anything that comes to your mind. One thing I remember from kindergarten and uh, really young child extracurricular activities, I remember that skits and plays were a thing. I remember in kindergarten and early grades, we were basically forced to act, and we didn't. most of us didn't enjoy it. A few of the children did. And I think most of us felt awkward, and we just want, we didn't want to do it, but a teacher made us do it, but... I mean, you can't really get mad at the teacher. They're just doing their job, and they probably don't like it either. I don't know who makes the curriculum exactly. I don't know who's telling the teachers or whoever's wrangling a class of kids for Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, whatever you call those troop leaders. Like, I don't know who's given them the commands and all that. But, like, in Girl Scouts and presumably also Boy Scouts, we didn't do anything except sit around, watch movies, do a few crafts, try and sell cookies and get badges or something. We didn't do anything in Girl Scouts, except we did a few skits. 
maybe some other time I'll tell you what I remember. But, like, it, it was pointless and, well, I, I want to say masturbatory. It kind of sounds like a gross thing to say in the context of children activities, but it's the word that comes to mind. They're just, like, in Girl Scouts, who would do skits about um, how great being a Girl Scout was, except we didn't do the things that the skit described. Like, I remember one little play... There's something about twist me and turn me and show me the elf. I look in the pond and I see myself. I remember this crap. It's really stupid what they force on children that it sits in your brain because you like you imprint on it and you remember it. Oh, this is gonna be a multi-parter. Who boy? Yeah, there there was some Girl Scouts play. I, I think it was like what seven, eight. I don't know. And uh, uh, the story is like. Some six-year-old girl main character and her sister had, like, 80-year-old parents, um, okay. And there's, like, this magic witch good guy or something that lives in a cave or on a hill. I I don't care anymore. But, like, oh, we have to go find the shaman because our parents are 80 years old and we're six and eight years old. And something about twist me and turn me and show me the elf I look in the pond and I see myself. And then the moral of the story is the six and eight year old girls go and uh, do all the chores. The end. Yeah, that's the story. Yeah, the parents are like, oh no, we're old and stuff. Okay, go find the magic witch and get advice. And then the girls go to the witch and she's like, okay, do do the thing and look on the pond. And then the girl's like, oh, okay, we have to do the chores now. The end. We didn't really do what that play detailed. We just sat around watching movies and, like, we made kites or something that was a little bit fun. And uh, we made, like, octopus toys out of yarn, you know, for um, badges. You gotta you gotta get the octopus yarn badge or something. Anyway, th- this is really about how acting is kind of really pushed on children. And then after a certain point, don't know when, it just becomes optional, you know, you know like drama club or high school theater. Like, that's a big thing. And you know what they say about the drama club kids, uh, you know what they say, just just go search, you'll find a lot. I never hung out with that crowd, I didn't really know them very well, so I can't say a whole lot. Other people knew them better, so, you know, just listen to what they say or read it. But uh, in kindergarten we had to do all these plays, like our parents would sit there and, and watch, and I, I don't know if we were graded on it, I, know I don't think we had an opt-out. Maybe there was. I don't recall there being an opt-out. Even the shyest kids that didn't want to say a word were like, you know, you know the those really shy but kind of stone cold and stubborn types. Like they want to sit there like a rock with a this cold expression, and they don't want to say a word. And the teacher just has to try and get them to do stuff. And for like these plays, the teacher would go, "Okay, you get to be a tree." And there would be these giant car- cardboard cutouts painted to look like trees, and there would be a hole for the face to stick out of. And so the the quiet kids would end up playing a tree, just standing in the back looking angry. And Yeah, I, I guess I got something to laugh about when I look back. I remember also from kindergarten and early grades, there was a lot of show tunes. I remember, I, I don't know if we had to sing show tunes for music section, like music class or something like that. I remember the music teacher and things like that. We had a few. Anyway, yeah, we had music class and it featured show tunes. And a notable one was the play Annie Get Your Gun. I re- remember I was really confused when I was that young because I was surrounded by well, cross-dressers. And, you know, I, I've said this before, I remember being confused because there was bearded women and teenage boys with tits talking in screech voices, and I was quite literally baffled. Yeah, I was baffled. And there was just so much stuff that didn't make sense. You know, like, they force outer space and chimps and dinosaurs on children, but, like, those things don't make sense. Apes should, like, overheat and die with all that hair and that climate. If you go outside and you look at ravens on a hot day, what do they do? They open their mouths. What do crocodiles do on a hot day? They open their mouths. What do chimps and apes never do? They never open their mouth, ever. Oh, uh, that's a different rant, and this is about actors. Well, there was a song from Annie Get Your Gun that had the line, My tiny baby brother can't even read a book. He knows one sex from the other. All he has to do is look. I remember that line very strongly because I felt inferior somehow to this implied character in a musical. I don't think the tiny baby brother is even a character in the musical. He's just mentioned. And he can know men and women apart from looking at them. 
and I was like five or six, I didn't know how to do that. I was confused because I honestly could not tell men from women. I could not tell. So I avoided making people angry. They they just get mad at you if you don't respect their pronouns. And I'm talking, this is the 90s. And eventually I figured out they're just the fake bullshit. They're, they're called tertiary sexual characteristics. It, it's some autism word. You know, like uh, if someone wears a bow on their head, you're supposed to call them ma'am or she, her. If they wear a bow on their throat, you're supposed to call them he, him. Anyway, the main idea was that society reveres actors today and in the past. There's just these remnants of that loathing that society used to have for actors, but it's been largely forgotten and overridden. Kind of a faded memory, I guess. Uh, what do you call something? There, there's an example that leaps to mind of a kind of a parallel to what I'm talking about. There are some lost movies from a very long time ago that are only remembered by a cartoon parody. Like, there's a lost film that is only... The only closest thing that remains to that film is a Bosco the Talking Kid short parody of it. I, I don't know what the movie is. I, I feel like that just kind of is a, a little illustration there. Actors are worthless, and in fact, they're detrimental. And to get you to believe in the impossible... Like, that's the feather in their cap. That's what they love. If you, you can cry and feel sorry for a cartoon toaster, then they got you. That's their, their proudest moment. Yeah, now I'm talking about animation. It's kind of a similar thing. They're, they're trying to make you feel sad over fiction. And, of course, there's, like, fiction in... Well, all the news is fake. All the stories are fake. We don't have time to get into that. Not right now. There's actually a lot to get into, and... Well, this is... Just something that's kind of really been a big thing on my mind. And there's a lot more to get into. So I'll just wrap this segment up and we'll see what the next one brings.